name of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We say all together, you are so lovely. And also we say your neighbor and lots of angels is here attending to listen at the, you know, the Holy Sermon. In this week, I was thinking about people. Why at the church there are many angels? Do you know? Everyone's got angel. When I was studying the first, I studied for demonology, means you know, the, about demon. And then I studied about angel. This is very important. Every, when God has created a human, created as well as a one angel who protect you, everybody. Those who believe in the name of Jesus Christ, the angel is always with you. But those who separate, unfortunately, from God, some point stay there with the people, with somebody. But angel has no more job and come back to where? The font. Where? The word of God is going, learning, and proclaiming. That's right, I'm saying. We have lots of angels here. They are waiting. They are, you know, the people who repent. Repent because that is a real image of God. God gave us this beautiful image, which we have all inside of a light. So that image today we can say the spirit, spirit of God. You have God, you have one too, and also your soul and your body. It is very important and also privilege to speak about you know today's uh, scriptures about especially the Holy Gospel, John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. We could understand Jesus had no house. Do you think Jesus had a big palace or big hotel or beautiful house? Unfortunately, no. In uh, chapter 8, and then if you read the chapter 9, the scripture gospel said, Jesus no, don't know, doesn't know where to put his head. Birds and foxes and animals, they have a need or where they put you know, their you know, bodies or sleep. But the Son of God, the, the Son of Man, neither where put his head. This is now comes from the gospel. If you read the observer very well, I repeat again. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. What does it mean? He has been in Mount of Olives. What he has done? He prayed and slept properly. Where? Outside. Okay, so it means that he had no, no house. Like your beautiful house where you can sleep and rest. At daybreak, he appeared in the temple again. In fact, his job, holy job, his mission is, was proclaim the good news Holy Gospel. Those who don't know who is God, those who don't know what does it mean, this life. And as all the people came to him, this is very important too, all the people came to him, rich, poor, sickness, 
or me, long me, everyone came to him. In fact, everyone wants to be happy. He sat down and began to teach them how important to listen the word of God means give me, give us the way. If we refuse to listen to the word of God, we don't know the way, but we know many, many ways. In fact, many, many people go other way. Somebody wanted to make just money, wanted to talk just about other people, better things, interesting himself, selfishness, many other things, not about the way. We know very well Jesus. And then give us, give them this, uh, you know, the real you know, the, uh, scenery. It's uh, very interesting. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery. It is very important the personality now. The scribes and Pharisees. We know very well, we understand them. Who were them? And this story you know very well. It is very important to this one. They accused, proved, tested to Jesus. Probably this woman was a victim and provoked Jesus and said, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Moses had ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? Today's my question is this one. What have you to say? Not to Jesus, but to me, and to you, and to scribes and Pharisees. What about you? You are innocent. You are right man or woman. But these people are always sinners, condemned to death. What about you, your sins? What about you? They asked him this as a test, in fact, a wicked man, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. It's very interesting. Sometimes we think what Jesus will write, wrote, Somebody said, probably, Ten Commandments. Somebody said, probably, the scribes and Pharisees, their sins, one by one. Probably, Jesus is writing about your sins, my sins. Or, oh, somebody, Jesus is writing this sentence. Put my name or your name. You are adultery man. Probably. But the scribes and Paris, they couldn't understand anything. What Jesus has done now, bent down and writing something. So they were furious, furious, angry. What must I say? We have a question asked you. You replied, please. 
So insisted. It seemed like something, you know, the evil is a, is a what is the win? As they persisted with their question, so angry, he looked up and said, Now the word of God comes. If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. He probably was writing something again because Jesus wanted to give it to them, give it to us. Conscience, reflection. You are really good man. You are really just fair man. Oh, Sometimes you are like this woman whom you judge in this way. What happened now? We know very well, no? When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, means with the, the, their conscience reflection. Fortunately, we have a conscience, even though sometimes dirty, sometimes hide from the right things. Until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there, he looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? In fact, it's very strange, isn't it? Why Jesus didn't ask her, Why have you done this? Why did you do that? Jesus never ever said that. Prodigal son, do you remember? The father, when saw the prodigal son, came back. But the father told him in this way, Why have you done? Why did you do that? No. No question. No question. Because this is a real love. This is an infinity love. But sometimes we have uh, too much questions. Isn't it? To be honest, we want to accuse like the Pharisees or scribes. Though you think they are right people, they are you know the intelligent, they have the power, authority. Oh poor man, poor people, you don't know anything. What about the mercy of God? Jesus the Son of God never ever condemned her, even though she was a sinner, even though we are sinner. And she said, No one, sir, neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. The last word, this one Go away and don't sin anymore. See no more. Those who meet really, those who stay within the love of God, they have a no more sin. In fact, the first reading, the prophet Isaiah said, No need to recall the past. No need to think about what was done before. See, I am doing a new deed. What? Forgiveness. Even now, it comes to light. Can you not see? Yes, I am making a road in the wilderness, pass in the waters. My dear brothers and sisters, God wants really give us 
His mercy, His love, and His forgiveness. You know yourself. Please and love one another, especially this time and grace time, Lent season. Without forgiveness, without repentance, we cannot stay with Jesus. We know God, but we don't know who is Jesus Christ. This is today's problem. People know who is God, but people don't know who is Jesus Christ. The scribes, the Pharisees, they know exactly who is God, but they don't know who is Jesus Christ, concrete, who is speaking now to you, to your heart. My dear brothers and sisters, I know you know who is God. God is far away, nothing to do for you in your life. I believe in God, but I'm nothing interesting because I know God never ever inter- what is it, you know, come in in my life because you don't know who is Jesus Christ. Who don't know Jesus Christ don't know to who is God. So those who know God, they don't know God really. This is the problem. The word of God couldn't stay in the sky, in heaven. Came here, made flesh. You can touch him. You can touch him, you know why? Because you are listening now to the word of God. You can touch him, Jesus' presence is here, through the Holy Communion. This is the grace of God, which today wanted to give us. Open our heart, receive, just receive, like this, you know, the woman. Receive the presence of God and listen His word. Means receive mercy, love, and forgiveness. In the name of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.